Welcome back to These Things Are Written on this Tuesday. So, so glad you're joining us again as we continue to look at Psalm 31. Psalm 31, as we saw yesterday, focuses on two or probably even three different things. The first one is refuge, where we find our refuge, our protection, our fortress in our God. The next one is how God gives us his deliverance. And then also thrown in there is this idea of shame. And the psalmist speaking, do not let me be put to shame. So we're going to pick up there. Verses 6 through 10 is what we are looking at today. I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but I trust in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have known the distress of my soul and you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemy. You have set my feet in a broad place. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief and my soul and my body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. This is the word of the Lord. You know, the first few verses that we have looked at uh, really have focused on the refuge aspect, but now it kind of turns back a little bit. Verses six through eight um, are, are really faith statements. Uh, it begins with that understanding of of in verse six, I hate those who pay regard to worthless idols, but in contrast, he shows, I trust in the Lord. It's a, a faith statement not to be put to shame. He doesn't want to be put to shame, and he is confessing the faith of, of the Lord, his faith, his trust in the Lord. Uh, verses seven and eight then kind of expand on that trust. He says, I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love. And then continues, because you have seen my affliction, you have known my distress, you have not delivered me into the hand of the enemies, but you have set my feet in broad places. All of those reasons that he trusts, because he sees, the Lord sees the afflictions, the difficulties of the people. He knows the struggles we're having in our soul. And more than that, he keeps us from being delivered into the enemy's hands, the evil ones. He protects us from that evil one. It really is an expansion on trust in these verses. Uh, let's turn now to, uh, to, oh, wait, one more thing before I move on in, in verse eight. Um, Notice how he says, you have set my feet in broad places. Again, that goes back to that refuge idea that we saw yesterday. So he is connecting this idea of not being put to shame with God being his refuge and guiding him in the midst of it. So now let's move into verses 9 and 10. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress he begins. You see, this is his request for deliverance. That statement that he makes in verse 9 is, is followed by really three sets of parallel statements that all kind of describe that distress that he's in. Notice, my eye is wasted from grief. That makes you think of seeing the sins in this world my soul and my body also. Have you ever noticed how sin can eat away at us physically? How we can become, uh, our, our souls can be troubled. Our, our bodies can feel that impact of that difficulty time as well. Then it moves forward. My life is spent with sorrow. My years with sighing. Showing that it is not just this little thing that happened, a one and done, but it is something that has been continuing in his life, seeing those sins of the people around him. But yet we find in the final part, my strength fails because of my iniquity. 
You see, it's not just seeing all of those sins in the world around them. It is knowing his sin. It's us knowing, recognizing our sin, our part in the struggle and the difficulty that we are facing. And he says, my bones waste away. The psalmist does a wonderful job pointing out to the Lord how, how he doesn't want to be put to shame and how God has done everything to keep that from happening. But yet, the psalmist points out his sinfulness and cries to the Lord for deliverance from those sins. Join us again tomorrow as we look at verses 11 uh, through 15 as we dig a little bit deeper into this psalm and see um, how God is continuing to work through this passage. Go in peace now, and we'll see you tomorrow.